organization in Richmond County, Georgia, this flag identifies a sports mecca known around the world, the Augusta National Golf Club. Here each April come many thousands to see golf's master players play the great national course. And then through the main gate, one rides down Magnolia Lane, 300 yards, flanked by huge magnolia trees that are over 100 years old. land was once a nursery, the first in the south, and flowers are still very much a part of the picture here at the National. The manor house of Belgian nobleman Baron Berkman, this antebellum mansion, today serves as the main clubhouse for the National. This pansy bed, shaped like a map of the United States, sparkles in color. The National, you note, is marked with the flag pinpointing Augusta. The course lies beyond and below this big clubhouse with its all-around wide double veranda. Big trees and the deep terraced lawn with chairs and benches that faces the putting green and the course itself. And around the old main clubhouse, there are the newly added cottages and other club buildings at Augusta. This dwelling, which is named the Eisenhower Cabin, serves as the Augusta home for national member President Eisenhower on his visits here. And then next door, overlooking the 10th tee and fairway, is another cabin, which is the club residence of Bob Jones. He continues to contribute to golfing history 30 years after his grand slam and retirement from competitive play. As president of the Augusta National, Mr. Jones on the left, together with his friend Clifford Roberts, Masters Tournament Chairman, has guided this club and its annual Masters Tournament to unprecedented heights. It was Mr. Roberts who first brought Jones to this site and proposed they form a club and build a course. That was 1931. Today, their dream is a living legend. 365 acres of breathtaking beauty. Each of the 18 holes here is named for a tree, a shrub, or a flower bordering its fairway or green. For instance, 400 azalea plants surround the huge 13th green. This is beauty the competitors may miss, but not the thousands of spectators whose convenience and enjoyment are given the greatest concern here. This is another master's tradition, enjoyment for the guests, the players, and the spectators. A new drinking fountain far out on the course serves to also remind visitors of earlier feats at the National, former winners, and course record setters, such as Ed Dudley's 69 in 1934, Henry Pickard's 67 the next year, Byron Nelson's 66 in 1937, the year he won the first of two master's titles, and Lloyd Mangrum's 64 shot on opening day in 1940. In the trophy room, there are many historic exhibits. Here one may see the set of clubs used by Bob Jones in winning the Grand Slam and his earlier conquest. Perhaps the most famous club in golfing history, the Jones putter. It's known wherever golfers play. This is Calamity Jane. These clubs help write the history here at the Masters, for they are from the bags of former Masters winners, and they were used importantly by those players in winning the tournament here. Among the portraits which grace the clubhouse are these excellent studies of member Dwight D. Eisenhower, President of the United States, and the club president of the Augusta National, Robert T. Bob Jones, Jr. Also, the Masters Tournament Chairman and the co-founder of this club, Mr. Clifford Roberts. The charm of the Masters is the reflection of Jones and Roberts, who continue to build and plan for the future. Yes, the Masters gets better every year, and they see to it. Well, okay, here's a champion starting this parade on Thursday morning, Fred McLeod, 78 years old, winner of the United States Open 1908, and he's playing today with Jock Hutchinson. He's 76, and he is a former PGA champion. Freddie, a symphony in blue. Horton Smith. Horton won the first Masters in 1934. He won again in 1936. He gets set to drive in the first. He's the only player to have played in every one of the 24 Masters. And away goes his drive. 
There's Gene Sarazen. He won it in 1935. That was the famous double eagle on the 15th green the last day. Playing today with Bill Campbell, the veteran Walker Cup star. Sarazen prepares to hit. And he lets go a mighty wallop. 25 years after the double eagle. Here's Johnny Jimmy Demerit. Jimmy has won the Masters Tournament three times. He won it in 1940, 47, and again in 1950. Now, big Arnold Palmer. He was the winner here in 1958, runner-up a year ago, and he's the heavy favorite for the 60 tournament. He checks all the points before he hits this first tee shot here on opening day. He wants to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Apparently it is, and he's ready to go. Down the fairway on the first hole. Here's Doug Ford. Doug had a 66 in the final round to win in 1957. Grips the club low. And with much determination, smashes it away. Well, the slammer comes onto the tee. Anytime Sneed tees up, big crowds attract. And Sneed's classic drive is sure to get them. He won here in 1949, in 52, and in 54. And twice he was the runner up. And the stylist never changes. Sneed drives off the first tee. Gary Middlecoff won in 55, and he had a great second round 65 in doing it. He drives to number one. And Ben Hogan, who won twice and has been runner-up four times, twice he lost in playoffs to Nelson and to Sneed. Hogan set for his tee shot on number one, and it's away. And with him today is Dean Beeman, the British amateur champion. As they leave the first tee, a big gallery goes with them. Down with the first green, Bo Winninger chips to the putting surface. A long chip going by the pin. It rolls on 10, 12 feet by. Winninger attempts to get it coming back. Up and in, and he gets off with a very good four on the first hole. Meanwhile, down by the second green, Ken Venturi prepares to pitch from 35 yards out. Hits it up onto the green. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And into the cup for an eagle. And Venturi has started on the second hole of the 60 Masters, two under par with an eagle. A great start for Venturi. Now at the third green, Brazil's Mario Gonzalez has a lot of territory between his club and the cup. He sends the ball rolling up toward the cup. And it disappears. A very fine putt for Gonzalez. Well, the par three fourth hole here at Augusta often proves troublesome. This is one of the real toughies on the front nine. But it's not for Julius Boris today. Here we see this long putt rolling and into the hole. Thirty for Boris on number two. Yes, the crowd has seen some fine action here early today. Now rounding the turn come Billy Joe Patton, the colorful Carolina amateur. He has this putt here on the ninth for a par. He's over the ball. Billy Joe wearing a blue sweater. Gets set. And up and in, and Billy Joe gets his par. His playing companion, Arnold Palmer, reports to the scorer that he has done the first nine today in 33 strokes. That's three under par. The favorite is off in front. Sam Sneed turned in 37, one over. He moves to try a long putt for a birdie here on the 10th green. Oh, it stopped a little short. This uphill putt left himself about a foot, maybe 18 inches away from the pen. And Sam tries this one. And something must have thrown it off because Sneed has three putted the 10th hole and he is now two over par through 10. This is a fact that is quickly reported on each of the 10 scoreboards around the course. Venturi, after that eagle, was out in 31, and the crowd flocked to him, but no one brought him luck. Here we see his putt on the 14th go up and stop short. Playing companion Dow Finstewall chips down. Finstewall left it close, taps it in, and gets his four. And we see Venturi replace his ball. He had made a good first putt. It came up this rather severely undulating green and left himself a short one here for his, his four on the 14th. 
It's up. Oh, it catches the rim of the cup and goes by. And Venturi has bogeyed the 14th. Well, Palmer and Patton also attracted thousands, and on the 520-yard 15th, both reach the green in two as Palmer walks across the bridge and up onto the green. The nearby scoreboard tells quite a story here. Palmer's red three, you see, means he's three under par through 14 holes. The dark green numerals indicate over par scores of the players. Playing with Palmer, Billy Joe Patton, and Patton tries an eagle putt, a long putt straight toward the pin, but slowing down and it stops. Very fine effort. Patton did not get his eagle here on 15. From almost as far, Palmer looks over his long butt for an eagle three. It's rolling, but it too stops just short, just inches short. Billy Joe's replaced his ball and very carefully studies this putt. This would be a birdie. Ball's in. And now Palmer has one a little shorter than that, and he will want to try to get this one in, certainly, because this is much needed today on the first day of play. There's no such thing as a sure putt. These boys know it, and they spend a lot of time studying even the small ones like this. Palmer's make sure that his putter is working smoothly behind the ball. And in, and he's four under par now. This is another birdie, and he and Patton move to the 16th tee. Sneed, the upper left, is preparing to chip on 15. His second shot here hit pin high, but bounced over the crowd and into the lake at 16. Sneed chips it up onto the putting surface, but it dies very quickly and is going to leave him quite a long putt. Sam did not like this ball to stop so soon as this long putt. He's a very good long putter, despite what you might have heard. He has this putt downhill on a relatively fast green. Not as fast as it used to be, perhaps, but still fast from this location. And he sends it toward the hole. And just by. Well, he saw a break there, and the ball went around the cup and stopped dead in the center beyond it. Good first putt, but it will cost Sam a bogey and a six here on the 15th. Now at the 15th, Venturi prepares to hit his third shot. It's up and clears the pond, lands on the green and rolls back barely on the putting surface. He has this approach putt up, up and beyond the cup. Too strong. And now Ken will have this coming back. A tricky downhiller. Venturi sends it up to the pin, up and by. And it's another bogey for Venturi here on the 15th. Ben Hogan tees off on the 15th and lashes into it. And his playing companion today, Dean Beeman, the British amateur champion, the boy from Baltimore, also hits a good shot on 15. Both Hogan and Beeman played their second shots short of the brook and moved down the fairway, preparing to hit to the 15th green. Here's Hogan, set, using a wedge. Up, up, over the pond. A little short and lands just on the putting surface. Sticks there. Beeman from about the same location. He's playing three under par golf today. It's his pitch over the pond. Up, over, clear. But he is short also. And his ball backspins off the green. Beeman chips from off the edge. It's set. And it's up toward the cup and beyond. Too long. Beeman went by the cup. Now Hogan moves over. He'll be use a putter. He's right on the edge of the putting surface. Hogan's ball is rolling up, up, up. But it stops short. This has been the story of many Hogan putts today. Ben has played beautifully from tee to green, but has left a lot of the putts short. And now Beeman has this tricky one coming downhill. It's fast. He taps it strong. But not too strong, and hits the back of the cup and falls in. A very fine saving putt for Dean Beeman on the 15th. From behind the green at the 17th, Venturi chips up, up onto the putting surface, but the ball stops very quickly. 
Now, Finsterwall has this putt for a birdie here on 17. The long putt, rolling, rolling, and into the hole for a birdie three for Dow Finsterwall. 400 yards, 17. Here's Venturi. Once more, it dies at the cup. A little short and a little offline, and Venturi, who had 31 on the out nine, is having bogey trouble on the back nine. The crowd moves up the home hole. They've seen some fine golf today. Palmer and Patton also walk along with refreshments at this point. As they got to the 18th green, Billy Joe's approach shot had gone to the right. He missed the sand trap and he missed the green. He's using a putter from off the putting surface. It's up, rolling up, up, up. Oh, catches the side of the cup at 18. Great try for a birdie. Here's Palmer's try for a birdie. He's already four under par. Ten feet, it rolls up, up, and in, and it's a three. Patton says, good going, partner. And Billy Joe has one little putt left. Arnold Palmer is in with 67 here on the first day of the 1960 Masters. Here's Patton. He gets his 75. As the big first day crowd checks the scoreboard, they see Palmer's red five. That means five under par, 67. It stands out on a day of many thrills and much fine golf, but there was more to come. The second day crowd knows that Palmer's leading with the 67. But to know where best to watch him, they read Bob Jones' booklet, which tells the gallery how to get around this big golf course and see the most with the least effort. Meanwhile, the crowd begins to gather around the first tee. Here we see Billy Maxwell, who had an even par in the first round. Colorful amateur, Gene Andrews. He shot a 73 yesterday. He hits on number one. This is Harold Henning from South Africa. Claude Harmon, the 48 Masters winner. He had a great 69 yesterday, and he drives it out again. Lionel Bear, former PGA champion. This is Dave Reagan. He's working on an opening 74. Another young star at the Masters, Mason Rudolph. He went for 78 in the first round. Lou Worsham had an even 72 first day score, and so did Ted Kroll. Don January, Thin Don had an fine even 70 yesterday. And J.A. Bear was better than that. Jay was three under with a 69. And the first tee is Walter Bercamo. He was 72, even par for the first round. Here the crowd gathers at the long second hole. We see Maxwell in the trap with his second, explode out a very fine explosion, sprays the sand, and gets up near the pin here on the second. Taps it in for his birdie four. Jack Nicholas, the amateur champion, in very much the same location, blasts out a fine shot, the ball straight up toward the pin. Well, and it's rolling, 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 and he's almost as far away as he was in the trap. Here's Mike Suchak out of the trap. He sprays the sand, sends it up not too close. Mike's over it. Goes up, up, and in for a birdie four for Suchak on the second. Ben Hogan reached the screen in two. That's his try for an eagle. It goes toward the hole, but short once more. Then taps it in. That becomes the first of six Hogan birdies here on the second day of the tournament. This is Claude Harmon, and his putt hangs up. Claude is looking for another birdie. He needs it and has to settle for a par here on the second hole. And meanwhile, the crowd moves farther out on the course. Here at the fifth green, there's a mound just in front. And Billy Casper has to go up that mound with a long putt. It goes up, up, up toward the hole. A good try. Billy walks up the hill. See, it's quite a hill. And he has this for his saving par on the fifth. Now, Fenstewall is playing companion today has a short putt left. It was on this green yesterday that Finsterwall took a casual practice putt as he was walking off the green, an infraction of the rules, and for this he was penalized two strokes. Today there was no practice putt. He walks off the green quickly. The crowd moves on with them. On the ninth, Hogan's approach has left him at the very top of the green, and he has a long attempt here for his putt coming down, down, and it goes beyond. A very nice putt, long one, but he's beyond. Now Ben has this shorty. It's in, and a four for Hogan on the ninth. His playing partner, Claude Harmon, has not had too much contact with his putter, and this one skims by again. 
Herman has this little one here, very short, three inches. That's in for a bogey on the ninth hole. However, he's even par 36 for the front nine. Also at the ninth, Beeman in the trap to the left. He's out nicely. The ball hits near the pen and rolls about eight or nine feet beyond. He now tries this downhiller. A little break from right to left, up, up. And he saves a fine four. Here at nine, Palmer faces a six or seven foot putt for a birdie. He's had none today. This one is up, up, and in. He has a birdie now. And this leaves him two over par on the front nine, a 38 going out. Back at the 10th green, Jack Nicklaus, the amateur champion, has a longish putt. He sends it up, up, and it runs by the pin. Keeps trickling along, but Nicklaus, a good putter, recovers. He gets his four. This is Tommy Bolt on the 10th. He cruises it up toward the cup and just on the side. Well, Bolt shakes his head, but backhands it in for his four. On the 11th, Ben Hogan, three under par, needs this to save a tough par four, but it goes by. This becomes Hogan's first bogey of the day. Now, Claude Herman tries to save a par. Claude has a little one. He does. Harmon's ball drops for his four here on 11. The crowd applauds, and Harmon acknowledges their applause. Still two over par. Palmer has a shorty for a birdie on the left. Oh, catches the side, stays up. Palmer can hardly believe it. He walks up. Get in there. This putt he thought he had. Rarely do you get a chance for such a good three here on 11. He looks back. It's still there, the elusive, disgusting hole. The crowd at the 12th saw many strange shots on this par three hole. Here's Gene Littler back out of the water, attempts to pitch over the water. He gets over, but on the bank, and I don't think he's too happy about that one. This is Ben Hogan. His right shoe and right sock have been removed. He is going to hit out of the water. The ball is completely underwater. Ben wants to blast it out of there. He does. The ball comes up, along with a lot of water, doesn't reach the green, but Hogan, still without his right shoe and right sock, going to come up from the rough there. Pitches up onto the green, and even with a wet foot, he got his bogey on 12. Meanwhile, at the 17th, Berkamo tries a distance putt. Long and going by. Oh, it went around the cup and came back to him. That's hard to believe, but so it did. And Walter taps in the little. Palmer's had only one birdie so far today, but now he has a good chance at 17. This putt is about seven or eight feet away from the cup, and Palmer moves over the ball. Notice his putting grip there. His left index finger straight down the shaft of the club. Practice stroke movement. But so is someone in the gallery. Now he's back, set. Up and in for a birdie. Palmer birdies the 17th. And things are looking up as they head for the home hole, the 18th here on the second day of play. Alf Finsterwald, playing two under par golf, has gone over with his approach here on 18, chips it down onto the putting surface. Ball is rolling, rolling, and goes beyond the pin. He is playing with Billy Casper. Casper was short on his approach shot. Has a long putt for his try for the birdie three. Up at the back of the green, the ball goes by the hole. Casper has this left. Oh, and he misses. It's a bogey. A 71 today for Billy Casper. 142 for the tournament. Vince wall now has this putt. Six, seven feet up in. And this gives Dow a 70 here in the second round of the Masters. The crowd applauds as he walks off the green. Arnold Palmer's approach to the 18th, he'd put his drive in the woods, and the approach lands on this slope below and to the left of the green. He hits it up, and a very nice shot it is. It runs, runs, takes the break, and goes very close. It's about two feet from the cup. Arnie knocks it in, and that gives him a 73 for the day. 
a 140 for two rounds, and a one-stroke lead over four others. Well, the scoreboard tells the story. Hogan, Harmon, Bercamo, and Fensterwall in pursuit of the front runner, Arnold Palmer. One stroke behind with 36 holes to go. Saturday morning, the third day, began bright and sunny, but later, as you see, it became cloudy and cool. No empty spaces in any of the several big parking lots. Approximately 10,000 cars are parked here, and there are passengers roaming the 385 acres of the Augusta National to see who, if anyone, can catch the leader, Arnold Palmer. Julius Boris has birdied the second, the fourth, and the tenth holes and is making a run. Here on 11, he's four under par. Boris taps this one in for his par. On the 15th, Boris has a birdie try. It's up, up, hits the cup, bounces, and stays out. Julius goes behind, threatens to hit the ball, does hit it, knocks it in, gets his five here on the 15th. At the 18th, Boris' approach shot was short of the green. He chips up, but he chips a little too strong, and it runs by and up the hill. This is the five-footer coming back, and whoa! It skims along the side and goes beyond, and Boris has his only bogey of the day. This gives him a 70 and his total score of 213. Fensterwall, even par so far today is three under for the tournament. He chips on the 11th, chips well. He has this putt and it stops short. Fensterwall, bogeys the 11th. After a birdie at 14, we see Dow pitches third at 15. It's over the pond, just clearing the pond. And now he has to chip from there onto the green. A good chip, it's six feet short of the hole. Up, around, and out. Well, it's another bogey six, as Finsterwall taps it in at 15. Now, Finsterwall drives on 18. He birdied the 16th and parred the 17th. On and two, Dow's putt goes up and by, and he misses his try for the birdie here on 18. It's in, it's a 72 and a 213. Ben Hogan drives on number one. He's only one stroke behind Palmer starting this third round. Playing with him, Walter Bercamo, who added a very fine 69 yesterday to his opening 72. And he is now three under par for the tournament played so far. Bercamo moves into position here on the first hole for his tee shot. After a good tee shot, Bercamo misses the first green. He went over, and he's going to chip back. Up it comes. Rolling, rolling, strong, across, on the green, off the green, and into the trap that guards the front of this first green. Bergamo blasts out, blasts out well. The ball runs up seven or eight feet short. Here's Hogan's try for a bird. Up to the left and out. Ben moves around, strokes this one into the hole for his par four. And Bergamo now, in such good position starting, saves a bogey five on the first hole. Here we see Hogan standing over his putt on the tricky fifth green. After a five iron stopped eight or ten feet away, Hogan had this left for a birdie. The new reporters here had asked Ben earlier if he takes longer to putt these days. He said no, actually has no time to study the line anymore. It takes him so long to get the club in motion. But he does study the line, studies the putt. He's ready, almost, for a birdie. And he sends it toward the hole, up a bit, and in. It's a birdie, his first of the day, here on the fifth. On the 11th hole, far from the cup, Hogan faces a long putt, 50 feet. This one rolls across this big, broad green, up and stops short. And whoa, it goes around and stays out. A three-putt green on the 11th. A bogey for Ben Hogan. 
Bates ain't been as short of the green. And he rolls the ball up very nicely, and he's a foot away. Great shot. That's for a par 72. A 213, also tying for the lead. The crowd applauds as Ben walks off the 18th. Back on the course at the fifth green, Ken Venturi. Short of the green, chips up. Chips over this little rise in the putting surface. Chips strong, and he goes up to the pin, up beyond the pin, and the ball continues to roll. Casper, his playing companion, puts down. Downhill it rolls. Casper had been in trouble off the tee. Taps that in for a bogey five here on the fifth. Now Venturi, from the upper side of the green, rolls it down. Ooh, it goes by. And it's a bogey for Venturi on the fifth. Ken approaches on 17. His approach shot comes in by the flag, rolls across the green up to the back. He stops about 30 feet away. Here goes his putt, back, 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 and it just misses. And Turi has this one. Oh, he gets it for his par. He also parred the 18th, and he too is tied at 213. Palmer, the leader, four under par, tees off on number one. And his playing companion, Claude Harmon, three behind, goes with him. Claude's approach shot here got chummy with a pocketbook. The lady left, but look where she left the ball. Well, Harmon is being told that it's all right to lift this. He doesn't know where the ball's going. Claude lifts the bag very carefully. The ball starts rolling. There it goes, down, down. Well, it, at least it doesn't go in the trap. Claude chips up toward the pin and just onto the putting surface. Here's Palmer. Good putt, but it stops a foot away. Claude tries for his par, and he misses, just misses. Well, he was close to the money at the latest pocketbook, but he takes a bogey here on the first hole. Now Palmer gets his par. And they go out toward the big front nine loop here at the Augusta National. Palmer birdied the second, the sixth, and the seventh holes today. But he got a bogey on the fourth and reached the turn in 34, two under par. On the 11th, Palmer is right at the front edge of the green, has a long putt. Strokes it toward the hole. Going, going, but it's die short. He's five feet away. Oh, it goes strong. Catches the side and around and whoop. Oh, don't hit it. But it will take one more stroke. And Palmer taps it in for his bogey on 11. Arnold's wedge approach on the 15th gets on its way. Comes up and is 11 feet short. His butt is strong. Oh! Back of the cup jumped up and fell in. Well, that's one way to get a birdie. Palmer's happy. He'll take them any way he can. Crowd applauds. And then Arnold moves on to 17, where he's strong with his approach shot. His nine iron went over the green. He has to chip back. It's a long way. He sends it up going, going. No ball there, go, it's to the left. And Palmer is farther away. He's 12 feet from the pen. Here it comes back. Ooh, short. And a bogey five on 17. And now on the 18th fairway, Palmer hits his approach shot toward the home green. The crowd bolts into action. A lot of people. It's darkish, it's chilly, but the fans have stayed with him. They don't want to miss a trick. Palmer moves toward the 18th, fighting his way through the big mob that has now completely surrounded the screen. Palmer's ball is off the green to the right, but he's going to putt it anyway. He puts it, comes up, 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 very fine, and stops just inches away from the cup. He taps it in, and that gives Arnold Palmer 72 today. He still leads at 212. Well, the crowd now moves around. Despite the change in the weather, though, they stayed to see Arnold Palmer finish. He leads by one stroke at this point over Ben Hogan, Billy Casper, Ken Venturi, Julius Boris, and Dow Fenster. And on the morning of the final day, the scoreboard shows Palmer leading and five players one stroke behind. The name board at the first tee shows two of the contenders next up, Ken Venturi and Dow Fensterwall. 
crowd lining the fairway as Venturi moves in position for his tee shot here on this final day. He's over it. And hits it down the first fairway. The Finster wall, dressed in dark blue, also gets away a good tee shot on number one. At the first green, Dow's long putt misses. Now Ken, on the apron, sends his ball rolling up across the green on this first. Up, and he misses also. The jury, it's over. Back into the hole for his par. And Fensterwald gets the same. Pars on number one. After a 33 on the front nine, Venturi is in the rough here on number 10. His third shot comes onto the green, rolls up, up, and just goes by the back. Here's Fensterwald. His eight footer goes in, and he has saved a par, a very important par here on the 10th. This is Venturi trying for a par. Ken at this point leads the tournament and has saved the par. They go to the 11th tee, Venturi and Finsterwall. On the 11th, Ken hit his second shot into the water, had to drop out and take a penalty. And now he tries this chip. Run, long, long it runs. It's a long way to go and it goes up. A very fine shot right by the pin. This is Fenster Wall's try up. He's on in two, and this putt of his is a long one, and it too is two great long putts. Ken drops it. It's a bogey five. The tournament could take quite a turn at this point. Venturi's five draws him back even with Fenster Wall. They're now tied for the lead. Fenster Wall bogeyed the 12th, birdied the 14th, and now at the 16th, they are tied. They're driving on this par three hole. Down through the trees, you see Venturi back. Here comes his shot. And he's on the green. The ball hits on the green, but it runs through and goes to the trap, the right-hand side, the back. Finsterwall's tee shot landed on the putting surface. Pressure is mounted. These two have been head and head now for a couple of holes. They share the lead. They were ahead of Arnold Palmer, who had started the day in the lead. Finsterwall prepares to hit his putt. He strokes it up, 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 near but not in. Has a good chance for his par three, but from where Venturi is, the chances of him getting a par three are highly unlikely. Dow finishes off. And now Venturi faces a most important stroke. You see, it's downhill to the pin. The pin is very close to the edge of the putting surface. And Venturi, in this bunker, has to get the ball up, but he doesn't have too much to play with once he gets out of the trap. The pin is very close to the edge. Down through a half pinch, half wedge. It rolls, rolls up, up. An excellent shot. Venturi's ball comes to rest not four inches away from the cup here on 16. And later, Ken said perhaps this was the greatest shot from a bunker he had ever played in his life. This part, part. He gets it. And a par when it looked a moment ago as though Venturi might have a four or a five. Still even at 18, final hole, Ken's big drive lets him hit the six iron on this 400-yard closing hole. Crowd moves in, rushes to get in position. Out onto the fairway of the 18th, the mass is come. And the announcer, Ralph Hutchinson, asks for silence so that the players will have no disturbance. Here's Fensterwall out of the trap where his second shot had landed. Comes up, up, up and rolls down the hill. Fine blast from this trap to the right of the green here at 18. Finsterwall and Venturi, even. But Finsterwall is there in three. Venturi's approach shot has come to rest here in two. And Venturi now prepares for a birdie putt on 18. Pressure is very high. Hutchinson asks for quiet again, Venturi. the putt so carefully. Up it goes to the left of the hole and stays to the left. Well, he read the green right. He knew that there was a breakdown, but it was a little too strong. It went up above the hole. 
directly behind him. So that was his cry for the birdie. This gives Finsterwall life again, you might say, because more or less uh, been in difficulty when his trap shot there came out. Now he is three, the same as Venturi, and has this putt for his par on the 18th. Finsterwall. Up, up. Oh, exactly the same line that Venturi's putt took. It did not break until it got beyond the cup. So he goes beyond it. So close to where Venturi's ball landed that Ken has had to move the ball marker so that Finsterwall can putt. Now, laps that one in, but it's a bogey five for him here on the 18th. A great struggle, a great struggle, and on the 18th, he comes up with a bogey five. Venturi now, the crowd watching him, places the ball ever so carefully. It's a short putt, but every little inch of this is important. And it's in. Venturi, for the four, has scored a 70 today and has the total score 283 for his four rounds of play. Venturi, one stroke better than Dow Fins to all his playing companions. They had quite a battle, these two, today. Sneed and Jack Nicholas come onto the 18th hole. You can see that some of the crowd is still out on the course. They come up with the slammer and with the young amateur champion. Let's ask for quiet. Nicholas from the trap at the right. Sends it out and, whoa, near the hole, but it's breaking down the hill and leaves him quite a sizable little putt. Sneed did not uh, reach the green. He's right on the very edge of the putting surface, 60 feet from the pin. It's up, 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 and into the hole. Sneed, three times the Masters champion, birdies the 18th hole here today, giving the crowd a chance for another big cheer for a man they've cheered many times here at Augusta. And I think he's pretty happy about it. Now, this 12-foot putt is important for Nicholas. If he sinks it, we'll tie Billy Joe Patton for the amateur lead. And he does, a 75 for him today. They tie at 293, the amateur champions of the 1960 match. Well, back on the first tee, Palmer and Casper. Palmer, the leader, and Casper, a contender, prepare to tee off. They're almost an hour behind Finsterwall and Venturi. Arnold hooks his tee shot here on number one. But Casper hits it straight down the fairway. From over in the ninth fairway, Palmer Recovered with a long iron, headed for the home green, onto the home green. And Arnold comes up and sees very pleasantly that the ball is only 12 feet away from the cup. Rolls down, down, down. And from the applause, you can see Palmer has started with a 33 here on the first hole. Then as he plays the 16th hole, Palmer is still four under par. But Palmer needs a birdie. He needs it very badly because Venturi is in. His score is posted and he's five under. Here's Billy Casper's putt on the 16th, a long putt from the front of the green, and he misses. Palmer knows the pressure is mounting here. He missed a chance to birdie on 15, and here he is now trying on 16, but he's a long way. Ball goes up, up, up toward the pin, hits the pin and bounces back. The gallery applauds a good shot, and perhaps Palmer feels so too, because he hit the pin, but he stayed close enough to almost guarantee his three. Casper putts. Oh, and his bounces out. And Casper bogeys the 16th. Palmer gets his par three, but at this point, he needs better than par. He needs birdies. At the 17th, a fine tee shot, and Palmer has hit an eight iron to the green. Casper prepares for his putt on 17. He misses. And now, the eight iron stopped too quickly for Palmer. He's 30 some odd feet short. Missed one here last year, only three feet long. Today, he's 10 times that far from the cup. And the putt is more important. Ready again. Ready, 35 feet away, up, up, up it goes. Into the cup. Palmer has heard the seventh. And is this man happy? Well, that pulls even with Ventura. Palmer goes off. 
Happy after 17 where he has a birdie. 18 still in front. And here we see the shot on 18. The crowd massed deep behind as they approach the green. Casper is hit in close already. And Palmer's shot comes in on 18. It looks to be almost as good. Comes down almost straight down with the pin. Jumps left and goes across the green. He is about six, six and a half feet away. Pin high. The crowd goes by. Casper imperturbably walks up onto the green. And here comes Palmer. The crowd deep, 10 or 12 people deep on all sides, completely surrounding this tremendous green. And yet the whole story rests on one man. Palmer replaced the ball and walks off. Hutchinson asks for quiet again. This is a moment that quiet has to be given. Here's Casper's try. He had a fine approach in here. It goes. He misses. Well, a fine putter misses from that close, but he gets a five. So the five for Casper leaves him well up in the tournament. The TV cameras and thousands and thousands of eyes here around this 18th green are watching. The moment is at hand. Palmer from behind has sighted this putt. He knows there's a roll here. He wants to make sure that the putter knows it when it makes contact. He now asks for silence again. It's an important putt. Everybody understands. There is silence. Heart stop. Heart stop beating. Rolling and into the hole. Palmer has birdied the 17th and 18th holes and has won the 1960 match. Casper congratulates him. And happy Arnold Palmer walks off the 18th green and he's champion here at Augusta. And now the Pinkertons escort him to the clubhouse. Well, Palmer, six under par, is in 282 the winner. Venturi, five under, 283. Finsterwald, four under, 284, then Casper and Boris. That's the way they finished in the 60 Masters. Art Wall was unable to defend his championship this year. He was ill and was not able to play. But Wall is on hand to participate. He's called up to make the presentation to Palmer. So Wall, who won a year ago, doesn't have to give him a green coat. He already has that. But he hands Palmer the gold medal as the 1960 winner and a plaque, his second championship here at Augusta. Palmer very humbly acknowledges the good fortune he has had in winning a second time, expresses his condolences to Ken Venturi, who came close and fell one stroke short. And now the ceremony over, the crowd breaks. The photographers rush to the champion, Arnold Palmer. He is the man of the hour, the man of the moment, here on the putting green of the Augusta National Golf Club. Everyone wants to get close to Palmer. And here's his final reward, a kiss from his charming wife, Winnie. That's the Palmers. Arnie and his bride.